What's up guys, we're here with the Burp Suite Web Security Academy. We're going to be solving this challenge, SQL Injection Union Attack, determining the number of columns returned by the query. And in the lab description, we're actually given some information that these category requests for the various products are vulnerable. If we click on one of the product filters, for example, let's try out gifts and pay attention to the network tab over on the right hand side. We'll see that we have a URL request sent to the back end, and it has this query parameter category equals gifts. In other words, the back end is taking that parameter and using it to construct an SQL query on the back end and then returning the results to us. Now, the idea at this stage, since it's the Burp Suite Web Security Academy, we fire up the Burp Suite proxy. And that's a great idea. We would do that if this was more complicated, but this is going to be fairly straightforward. We can just manipulate this HTTP request via the browser here. So we're going to right click and we're going to choose edit and resend. Now, a couple of things I tried here initially is I always like to start off with just adding a quote and see what kind of response we get. And you can see this time we get a 500 error. So we provoked an error from the server. Okay. That's step one. Let's keep editing and resending. So we are going to change this to something else. Now, the next thing I tried was, or in fact, you can also say, and one equals one. So this is something that should technically work if it is possible to inject. Now, the first thing I did try is the trailing semicolon followed by the comment characters. And if we send that, we actually get a 500 error. So it's saying it wasn't able to pass that particular SQL query. So it seems in this case that we don't want that semicolon. So if we retype that payload, so we're going to say, and one equals one, we're going to skip out the closing semicolon. We're just going to provide the comment character and we get a 200 response to say that basically the backend has accepted that SQL query. The next thing we can do is try and enumerate the number of columns that are returned by this query, since that is the purpose of this particular lab. So let's reconstruct a new payload here. In fact, let's trigger off the original request. It's a bit easier to read. So we're going to choose union select. And we basically just want to keep adding null values here. And in the lab training, it explains why we use null values. It's because the data types in each column must be compatible between the original and the injected queries. So although we can use an attack such as union select one, two, three, we actually maximize our chances of this injection attack working by using null values. Now, if we submit this particular payload, we're going to get a 500 response. And that's because there's more than one column of data being returned by the original query. So we essentially need to keep going until we get a 200 response from the server. Now I've just paused there and re-edited the string. So now we're union selecting null, null and commenting out. Let's send that. We get another 500 response. So now we're going to try union select null, null, null. Let's see what we get there. And we can see that we get the message. Congratulations, you solved the lab. So how many columns are being returned by the query? Well, it must be three columns because we've union selected three null values and received a 200 response from the server. Thanks for watching, guys. Feel free to check out Web Security Academy. Seems like a great resource.